Hey everyone, thanks for joining. I'm Hashem, you're watching Pushing Film and welcome back to another live stream. Today I want to share a little bit of this book. It was mentioned in my last video, one of my last videos uploaded to the channel where I shared some recent photo book pickups. It's called Under Vancouver and it's by Greg Gerard. So thanks if you are here live and I hope you enjoy this if you are just watching it back post stream. I think this is a book that a lot of you guys, especially a lot of my film photographer audience will really love and I think uh, more people should know about this book but uh, Greg Gerard's work in general. So let me know if everything's working all right and uh, also let me know in the comments if you are familiar with um, Greg Gerard's work or if you're not, if you've never heard of him because I want to sort of give a little bit of a background for anyone who's unfamiliar. And uh, yeah, I'm only a recent fan of, uh, of Greg's work and I think um, it's some great stuff. So first things first, when I uh, first discovered uh, Greg Gerard's work, it was actually through Instagram of all places. And I know I mentioned this in the last video I uploaded to the channel, but it was through the profile Greg for a day. So I'll actually just switch here to the other view and show you the Instagram profile. But yeah, I used to just follow this page, not really knowing much about the the author of the page and their work. And then um, sometime more recently, a friend of mine over in Sydney, Perry, reached out to me and said, hey, man, uh, you would really like this book, I think. You should get yourself a copy. It's amazing. And he shared it with me by private message. And he said, you know, it's only $60 um, uh, US dollars shipped. And I was like, oh, all right, yeah. And then it clicked with me. Oh, hey, I, I do actually follow Greg's work online. And I um, ordered a copy of the book. It arrived some time later and I really love it. So, you know, straight to the point there. But just to give you a background, Greg Dryd is a Canadian photographer who has been making documentary and personal work ever since the early 70s. He started shooting uh, as a teenager around the age of 17 in his hometown of Vancouver, where the contents of this book are from. And, you know, he was uh, as young as 17, going out and staying in uh, hotels or motels and just photographing the people he met and the things he saw. And what you'll find in this book is a lot of that sort of unseen side of the city, uh, you know, the kind of darker underground, almost underbelly part of Vancouver. Now, I've never traveled there, but I think it's a fantastic body of work. And, uh, you know, shortly after the time of making this series, uh, Greg actually spent a large amount of his lifetime living in Asia. So there's another huge body of work that you can explore that I've linked in the uh, video description below. You can check out his website. Again, uh, you know, heaps of uh, a variety of different work from different countries, including Japan, Hong Kong and so on but i've linked a couple of different websites for you guys in the description these are you know he's got a huge body of work a lot of books and uh, i think it's a shame that a lot of people only know of him through instagram but i think more are discovering that he's actually published a fair few books and that you can kind of get an idea of all the different books some of which are in production some are probably older but all of them entail uh, kind of a really large body of work and kind of just looking at these thumbnails you'll get a rough idea of the kind of content that you might expect from Greg Gerard. So just checking in on some of the live chat here and uh, YouTube, I've not heard of him. Okay. And hey, John, thanks for joining. I've also found Greg's work recently. Yeah, good to know. And uh, JL Crew is the deepest secret book. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's jump into it and just show you a little bit more of the book. So I'm going to uh, switch to my other view here and just show you the actual book I've got laid out on the overhead camera. Uh, it's a fairly small book. I don't know what the, the size is. It looks like it's about, you know, seven inches long, roughly. Well, it's almost eight by 10. Uh, but yeah, you open up into a nice contact sheet here. And if you're not familiar, Greg Gerard, you know, obviously did shoot all of his work on film, but he was really quite known for shooting a lot of color, especially. I mean, there is black and white work in here, but he was a fan of making photographs on slide film, on daylight balance slide film, especially at nighttime. If you look through some of those photos I showed you earlier and throughout this book, you'll find that there are a lot of photos taken either indoors or at night. And something that was a little bit unconventional to use, uh, you know, daylight balance transparency film at nighttime, which would give you this unique look uh, that you'll see in a lot of these photos. 
especially when we get to some of the nighttime ones. So I'm going to sort of skim through uh, without spoiling too much of the book for you. Just some, especially some favorites that I have in this book and uh, just images like this. Uh, really beautiful sort of tonality that you get and it looks like a lot of it would have been made on a tripod due to the lower speeds a lot of these films and just sort of this raw documentary work almost like a bit of a fly on the wall perspective a lot of the time uh, documenting the people and the places throughout Vancouver between the years of 1972 to 1982. And looking at images like this I I've known that some people might draw parallels to the work of uh, you know, Fred Herzog. But what I find is that a lot of that probably is due to the fact that there are images made in some of the same parts of Vancouver in the central city area like this one. But the the work is is vastly different between the two, I find, in terms of actual style and, and, um, and so on. Maybe some of the subject matter might uh, crossover, especially when it comes to the Vancouver and the, the fact that there's a predominance of color work, but they are unique in their own ways. And again, you know, there's these great night scenes, especially what really stand out to me. With a couple of these uh, full page spreads, I know some people aren't a fan of that when it comes to photo books, having the, the image printed across the gutter. Again, I've mentioned this, that I am sort of indifferent about it. But overall, the quality and printing of the book is quite nice. And yeah, you've got those black and white images and some great portraits as well. So I think, you know, he was uh, the type of person that would sort of speak to the, the subjects in these portraits, get a little bit of rapport happening, uh, as opposed to the much more candid style of street photography you might expect from other photographers. And you can kind of feel that connection in some of these portraits that you'll see both in this book and some of his other work. And I guess some images like this are what sort of create those um, connections people make between his work and uh, people like Fred Herzog or Saul Leiter, because again, all of them having shot on Kodachrome or, you know, slide film, not necessarily always Kodachrome and around similar places, a similar era as well around the seventies, you might get that sort of crossover. But again, I find Greg's work to be really uh, sort of distinctive in its own style. And yeah, let's just flip through a little bit more of the book to give you an idea. And um, you know, you've got your portraits there, some color, some black and white, again, with the interior shots, really nicely composed, uh, generally wider perspective images. And you can tell that there is a certain fascination uh, even as someone as young as, you know, he was a teenager when he started uh, shooting this series and his early 20s um, with some of these these subjects in the book. So John mentioning first visited Vancouver in the early 1980s. I saw glimpses of old Vancouver before it modernized for the Expo 86 World's Fair. Interesting. And uh, under Vancouver's now sold out on Greg's website. You're lucky to have a copy. Wow, I was actually not aware of that. I was really hoping that there might still be copies uh, for you guys to to snap up. And I did notice I was going to check Amazon, for example, and the copy there was 190 plus dollars. So I didn't, uh, you know, link that because that just seems a little bit silly. And plus, if the the author is selling it on their own website, and you can see I've got a signed copy here, um, luckily that is always the best place to go. But I would encourage you to just, you know, keep an eye on both his Instagram and on the website. Uh, I thought it was still worth sharing this book anyway, because it's such a great book and it might expose you and encourage you to buy, uh, you know, his future books. One of which I'm going to mention towards the end of this live stream that I have personally pre-ordered. And I think a lot of you guys would really be interested in as well. But yeah, through this book, I want to just give you a glimpse into Greg's style of work. Again, jumping back to these portrait orientation shots of people, some really raw sort of um, semi-candid or candid style shots like that. So not, they're not always uh, the more posed portraits and you'll see um, kind of these environmental portraits as well. I really love this shot as well. And, you know, some of these golden hour images and, uh, you know, you might not be having the correct representation of the color on the overhead camera that I'm using, which is actually just my smartphone uh, pegged up on a C stand. but yeah, I hope this gives you a good idea of what to expect in this book. 
And um, I'm just noticing Stephen Chen mentioning in the comments um, that you might be able to find it somewhere else. Okay, you, you might have tried to post a link which YouTube doesn't let you do. But yeah, I'm, I'm actually curious about that. I was really hoping that, because um, I bought it not too long ago and you know it, it's not surprising also given the, the caliber of the work that the book would sell out. And almost this sort of um, you know classic Edward Hopper-esque style of composition of the corner of a, a diner. Um, with what, what I love about the fact that he does use these um, slide films is that the way they render artificial lights is just something special even until today if you go and shoot a roll of Velvia or Provia ectochrome at night you'll find that they have this really unique way of rendering especially fluorescent lights and you may not see it correctly on YouTube but there's a really uh, nice sort of turquoise kind of aqua green blue way they render fluorescent lights that can often turn into a really like ugly tinge on color negative films or on digital especially. And I have mentioned this in my review of Ektachrome on the channel that Ektachrome especially does look really nice shot at nighttime with these longer exposures. Uh, and yeah, on that topic for all you fellow film nerds, I did mention this in my previous video as well, but uh, there is a little bit of a back and forth conversation in the book here. But more interestingly for a lot of you uh, film geeks is that there is an index of all the film types used for all the shots which um, is a little bit amazing to think that you know back then you would have gone to the effort to actually record uh, not only the location but also the film stock used and uh, have it available in the back of the book for example you know you've got 1982 on um, page one's photo was taken on Fuji Chrome 100 and a variety of films you can see a lot of use of Ektachrome, Kodachrome 25 and then the black and white to almost all Tri-X as far as I remember and I can see here. But yeah, I thought that was another little um, nice Easter egg for a lot of you guys that you would find interesting. So yeah, I hope that gives you a good idea of um, Greg's work if you're not familiar. And for me, this was my discovery of his work in physical format. I had been following his Instagram page for quite a while and, uh, you know, always a fan of the work there. But books are always the better way to go so let's just have a quick look again in case you missed the um the instagram um profile but it's greg for a day on instagram and what i would like to bring your attention to is that he is actually launching a book based on his time in japan so as i mentioned earlier he uh you know made visits to uh, you know asia as a young man and spent some time living in japan and a total consecutive you know, time of about 30 years living in, in Asia in general, including places like Shanghai. But for anyone here who is a fan of Japan, who has traveled there, uh, his Japan work, whenever it's posted on Instagram, is usually the work that actually grabs my attention first and foremost. And when I went to buy the Vancouver book, I was actually curious more about the previous Japan work, which I think had sold out. However, this one titled... Uh, JAL or JAL, I think, you know, you know, Japan Airlines being the, the reference there for the title, is available for pre-order. I jumped on it, pre-ordered a copy immediately, and it's available on his website. Again, I am not affiliated with uh, Greg in any way, and there's no affiliate links or Amazon links or anything, but I just thought it would be nice to uh, get his work out to more eyes for, you know, I know especially a lot of you guys that shoot film would really love this stuff and um, be a fan as much as I am. And just looking through some of these images here posted on the on his Instagram profile gives you an idea of what will be in the upcoming book, which is set to launch uh, late this year. And I think for international buyers, it would be shipped early next year. So I placed my pre-order knowing that it probably won't ship until, as you can see here, March 2022. But this is right up my alley. So 1970s to 1980s Japan, uh, get on this, guys. I know that someone mentioned that the Under Vancouver book may have sold out, but I think this is a great chance for any early birds to jump on this pre-order, which is available through his website, which I've linked in the description below. And the link you want to look for is the one under greggerardpictures.com. And then you'll see that here. So it's be, it'll be a signed copy, J-A-L. 76 to 88 and as far as I know this should still be available I mean it looks like it here and that'll be shipping 
uh, around the end of the year and early next year. So I hope, yeah, I hope that helps guys. I'm really curious now while I have you live to see if the Under Vancouver book is indeed sold out because the last time I checked, it was still available. Maybe, maybe it's not. I'm going to try adding it to cart. I mean, yeah, I'm not too sure. It says I can add it to cart. Uh, so try your luck if it's still available. This one is 42 US dollars. I think I paid about 24 US dollars shipping to Australia. If you're closer to Canada, such as the USA, obviously shipping would be a lot cheaper for you. But yeah, check it out. And I hope maybe that I um, piqued your interest in that uh, JAL book as well, which I'm really looking forward to. In fact, it was Sarah who alerted me to it and said, um, she tagged me in the post that he made and said, you know, we have to buy this. And, and my reaction was, <laughs> oh, shit, yes, we do. So, you know, jumped on a pre-order pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I mean, just looking through this work, I think you guys will definitely uh, enjoy this stuff, at least for the majority of you. All right. So that's what I wanted to really share is an introduction to Greg Gerard to the nature of his work, the documentary style. Uh, he really focuses on the transforming nature of the Asian cities that he lived in, some of these major Asian cities, whether it's Tokyo or other parts of Japan or Okinawa, for example. There's another body of work from there, uh, Kowloon and um, Shanghai. And yeah, so there's, there's a really great body of work for you all to check out. I hope you enjoyed a glimpse into this particular book. And I'm just going to look through some of these last um, live chat comments to see what I've missed. YouTube creatives, it looks great. Definitely. And Stephen Chen, look up Vancouver Special to Vancouver-based design slash bookstore. Yeah, because Stephen, you're based over in Canada, aren't you? I can't remember if you're in Toronto or Vancouver, but I'm leaning towards Toronto. Um, John, link does not show. Uh, yeah, John, try the link in my the video description of this, this particular video. Otherwise, um, yeah, a quick search should enable you to find a copy somewhere and it looks like maybe it worked for you already so and steven greg has such amazing memory <laughs> um, if you ever interacted with him, ig you would know he remembers the story to every photo yeah i actually do notice that sometimes when he posts an image someone will ask you know for example what about this photo in this hotel room i think it was one of his more recent posts um you know let's jump back to instagram and it was in a in Tokyo somewhere and he seemed to have an answer to what was happening in relation to that photo at the time and uh, you know maybe where it was taken or something like that so I I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of that is down to having a great memory which um, I, I would not be able to remember <laughs> what film I shot something on let alone more of the story to some uh, photos more than a few years ago and uh, someone commenting I love this Kowloon walled city shots yeah so that was one of his um his most known books apparently Film combo makes for a surreal look into the city. Great. Yeah, it's almost like a Blade Runner vibe, I think, with a lot of this stuff. And I know that that's sort of thrown around a lot, but, you know, my mind can't help but go to that. And John, sorry if I'm mistaken. hope it's still available for all. Yeah, I mean, that would be good. And uh, the room was Hilton, Tokyo. Yeah, so there was a commentary on one of the posts about that room in Tokyo. I know, John, you're based in Japan, aren't you? So uh, I know that you would find a lot of that upcoming work uh, relatable as well. And this photo here was in Kawaguchiko in Japan, somewhere that um, I have traveled to. Sorry, I was just browsing through the Instagram still while I'm um, chatting to you guys. But have a look at this. Uh, just to give you an example, living in Tokyo in the late 70s, had no interest in Mount Fuji. But in his more recent years, actually, you know, thought to what was his commentary here? My young contrarian nature has softened and finally made a trip to see Mount Fuji up close. Perfect and majestic. It did not disappoint. So there's some more recent images as well. So he's been shooting professionally ever since the 1980s and continues to do so until today, currently based back in Vancouver. And yeah, beautiful uh, Lake Kawaguchiko, somewhere that I've been to a few times and Sarah and I are big fans of that part of Japan. And uh, there's that, that shot from the, um, the Hilton that I mentioned. Yeah, and you can see, you know, a lot of commentary and um, engagement. Um, with a lot of the work. Yeah, this is a great shot. All right, guys, I won't um, <laughs> hold you up for too much longer. I think I'll um, end the live stream there and just um, say thanks again for all the support as usual on, on all the videos. Uh, stay tuned. I'm actually doing another sort of brief, almost like a little pop-up live stream later in the day just to announce something 
uh, to all my Australian viewers. So I know this might not be as relevant to some of you overseas viewers, but that's the reason I'm doing it later in the day because um, I think a lot of the US and overseas people will be deep asleep by then. So if you are based here in Australia, um, check back in, make sure you've got notifications turned on. I'll be doing another impromptu live stream to make an announcement uh, later in the afternoon or evening today. And yeah, I hope you're all well. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll catch you on the next video or live stream. All right, guys, see you later.